Hey, for this particular talk, we're going to assume that you know what type 1 and type 2 diabetes is, how to diagnose diabetes, and how it presents. So we're just going to get into the diabetes medications. Metformin works by regulating glucose absorption in the gut. It also decreases hepatic breakdown of glycogen into glucose, and it sensitizes muscle to insulin so that it takes up more glucose from the tissues. It's going to help with some weight loss. It's not going to cause hypoglycemia, and it's really cheap. It does cause some GI side effects, so that can be a problem, and it could cause really bad lactic acidosis. The next is the GLP-1 agonists. These work by simulating the effects of a hormone that usually you get after you eat. And that tells your brain, hey, you're full, stop eating. It also slows gastric emptying, so you feel full for longer. It increases pancreatic islet cell production of insulin. So it's going to be really helpful at helping you lose weight, very low risk of hypoglycemia, and in some patients, it's going to protect from heart disease. The downside is it's going to cause a little upset stomach, especially in a full feeling. It's a little pricey. It's injectable, not oral, and you shouldn't use it if a patient has pancreatitis. These are some examples of these medications. You'll see some of these are very prevalent in the media right now. For example, semaglutide or ozempic is being frequently used for weight loss. The next is the SGLT2 inhibitors. But essentially how these work is that glucose molecules are on the urine side and normally those get reabsorbed because you don't want to pee out all your carbohydrates because that gives you energy. If you block the SGLT2 co-transporter, then more of these glucose molecules stay on the urine side and are eliminated from the body. This also acts as an osmotic diuretic, so you lose more fluid. So it can be helpful in patients that have heart failure. They're also going to have weight loss with this drug, and there's very low risk of hypoglycemia. The downside is, as you urinate more, there's dehydration, increased fracture risk, there's risk of infection, and in some patients, it could risk amputation of limbs if they're already predisposed, such as in a condition like peripheral vascular disease. You should also avoid it in patients on dialysis, and there's this weird syndrome called euglycemic DKA. So these always end in flozin. So finally, ureas are next, and basically what they do is they whip the islet cells of the pancreas and say, let's go, make more insulin. They always end in zide or ride. They are going to lower your A1C, and they're pretty cheap, but the downside is you're going to gain weight. They're also at very high risk of causing hypoglycemia, so you should avoid them in elderly patients because the hypoglycemia is going to be prolonged, and you're probably going to have to admit these people. Here are some examples, glimepiride, glipizide, or globuride. Then there's the DPP-4 inhibitors. These work by shielding these peptides like GLP-1 or GIP that normally would help lower glucose, and they allow those hormones to last longer in the bloodstream by inhibiting the peptidases that usually chop them up. These are going to have very low side effects. They're given orally, and they don't cause hypoglycemia. You're not going to lose weight with these agents, and they're not going to be quite as effective at lowering your A1C as some of the other agents. You should really avoid them in heart failure because some patients can have heart failure exacerbations who take them, but not all the agents. Here are some examples. Uh, they all end in glyptin. Next is pioglitazone. It is going to sensitize the muscle and adipose tissue to take up more glucose. So the thiazolidine diones always end in glitazone. They're given orally, very low risk for hypoglycemia. They are going to cause weight gain, increase fracture risk, and may cause edema. So you want to avoid them in patients who have heart failure or risk for fractures, osteoporosis. The only one that's very useful clinically is pioglitazone or actose. Rosaglitazone is very rarely used. So here it is, putting it all together. Now we're going to talk about insulin formulations. Insulin is going to cause unlimited lowering of the A1C. The downside is it's going to cause you to gain weight. And of course, there's a very high risk of hypoglycemia because it's, you know, insulin. There's no real condition or state in which you should not use insulins. Short-acting insulins include FIASP, which is insulin aspart. It's very rapid-acting. But these three are more commonly used. Insulin Lispro, Humalog, Insulin Aspart, Novolog, Insulin Glulacine, Epidra. These are going to work within about 5 to 15 minutes and last for 3 to 6 hours. Regular insulin is going to work in about 30 minutes and last 6 to 10 hours. The long-acting insulins, such as NPH or Novelin N, Humulin N, could last up to 18. Insulin Detamir or Levamir could last up to 24 insulin glargine or lantus definitely 24 insulin glargine which is a different formulation like tujeo it could last over 24 hours and insulin diclutec or draceba could last at least 24 hours and probably a lot more what's going to happen is you're going to see these medications on a med list such as semaglutide and you're going to say 
I do not remember what that is, but you're going to see that it ends in tide. And if it ends in tide, tides are made of water. You go up water. That means it's a GLP-1 agonist, and that's going to make you feel full, and that's going to make you lose weight, low tide, low weight. In paglifosin, you're going to say, I don't even know what that is. Well, it ends in flozin. And anytime you see something that ends in flozin, it increases flows in the kidneys. These are the SGLT2 inhibitors. They're going to decrease glucose reabsorption in the proximal tubule and cause an osmotic diuresis, but they have this weird side effect of euglycemic DKA and dehydration. Glimepiride or amaryl ends in ride, so you're going to ride grandma to the hospital with her hypoglycemia and decide to admit her. Decide. So final ureas. These are the agents that increase islet cell production of insulin. Citagliptin, you're going to say, oh, what is this? Ends in glyptin. Well, if it's a glyptin, it's ziptin, a bulletproof vest that's going to protect from hormone degradation. Uh, the proteases like DPP-4. This is a DPP-4 inhibitor. Pioglitazone, finally, this class ends in glitazone. If it is a glitazone, it is on, meaning it turns on the adipose and the muscle and improves insulin sensitivity. We put together a quiz to help you test your knowledge on what you just heard. So go to our YouTube channel under the community tab to take the quiz. Thanks.